The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. I'm Liz Purnell, an Education and Training Specialist with the Institute of Child Nutrition. Welcome to the Team Up Thursday's webinar on integrating local foods into child nutrition programs. The Institute of Child Nutrition, along with its Applied Research Division, has collaborated with USDA to develop Team Up for School Nutrition Success. Team Up is a unique learning experience designed to enhance the operation of school nutrition programs. It provides tailored technical assistance to programs that want to maintain a healthy environment and increase student meal program participation. As a follow-up to the Team Up Pilot Workshop in 2014, a monthly webinar series was launched. It serves as a platform to further enhance partnerships and to provide an opportunity for all school nutrition professionals to discuss issues and provide solutions and best practices used by districts in key areas. The ICN has created a website for all materials and resources specifically related to Team Up. You can find the information at www.theicn.org slash Team Up. Today's webinar features a panel of experts who will discuss integrating local foods into school nutrition programs. I'm pleased to introduce our panelists. Deborah Kane will start us off today. She is the director of the USDA Office of Community Food Systems. Next, we will hear from Kara Sample, who is the Assistant Director of Nutrition Services with Weld County School District 6 in Greeley, Colorado. And last but not least, we have Stephen Marinelli, the Food Service Director at the Milton School District in Milton, Vermont. During today's webinar, all attendees are muted. There will be time for questions following the presentations. If you have a question, please type it in the question box on your screen. And now I will turn it over to Deborah. Thank you, Liz. Um, hi, everyone. This is Deborah Kane. And uh, as Liz just noted, uh, there'll be three of us on the line today. Myself as the director of USDA's Office of Community Food Systems, and two of my colleagues from school systems across the US, Tara and Steve. And honestly, I thought I would uh, run through my, my preliminary comments as quickly as possible, because I really want to make sure that we give as, as much time as possible to our two food service colleagues who are in the field uh, doing, doing the good work of bringing local foods into our school meal program. Um, but just a quick note with regard to the, uh, the Office of Community Food Systems at USDA. This is a relatively new office for us. And in case you're hearing about it for the first time, we were previously known as the Farm to School Program. So, Historically, the group of folks working uh, in this Office of Community Food Systems, we were very focused on bringing local foods into our K through 12 programs, our National School Lunch and School Breakfast program. Uh, but recently, in the last year or so, our portfolio has expanded to include not just the National School Lunch and School Breakfast program, but we're now also very focused on bringing local foods into our summer feeding program and into our CACFP programs. So I did want to note that many of the resources we'll talk about today, many strategies we'll talk about today, and many of the people that I'll introduce you to by way of staff at USDA uh, are all working on, you know, the strategies apply to summer and CACFP, the resources apply, and the people that I'll introduce you to can also help in that regard if, if you're interested in bringing local products into into other meal programs other than our K-12 programs. So with that, let's do, uh, let me give you a quick sense. Like I say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through my portion very quickly. I just want to make sure that we're using common language when we talk about local foods. So I'm going to talk about what they are and what do they mean. I'm going to do a quick flyby on a few ways to integrate local foods into your school meal programs, but really the integration conversation is going to come from Kara and from Steve. So what do we mean when we say local? And I always pull up this slide to make it clear that we're talking about bringing local products into the entire 
school meal tray. So a lot of people, when they hear farm to school, or when they hear the word local foods, their mind immediately goes, very understandably, to fresh fruits and vegetables. We absolutely mean fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, we also mean processed or frozen or canned fruits and vegetables. But, um, but fruits and vegetables are not the only product category that we're talking about when we talk about local foods. So at USDA, we want to look at opportunities to bring in local meats, local beans, local grains. Um, we want to, on some of our coastal communities, take a look at bringing in local seafood. And definitely, we're also talking about local dairy. Uh, I talk to a lot of school food service directors who tell me, oh, I don't really have time to do farm to school. It's so much, so much work. I can't, I can't, you know, find the hours in the day to connect with local farmers. And, and often I just say, oh, you know, are you buying local milk by chance, or, or where's your milk from? And because milk is one of those highly perishable products, more, more often than not, the, the milk the people are bringing into their school food program could be considered local. So I always like to point out that milk is definitely a part of the equation. Um, with regard to defining local, uh, the definition of local is yours to define, uh, yours if you're a school food service director. USDA does not have a federal definition for what we mean by local. Um, and so we, we, we give folks a few, few options or a few things to think about when you're starting to define your local foods program. So you can define local as within a state, you could say, but in your instance, you want to define it as within a city or a county or within a specific radius or even within a whole region. Maybe you want to say that your local foods program includes all products grown in your state and all the states that touch your state. That would be a regional approach. Um, in other states that you know, perhaps use that statewide legislation uh, or statewide local buying programs, and maybe your state has already defined local as within the state. There may be reasons for you in that case to say, well, us too, that's how we define it. But again, uh, from USDA's perspective, you are under no obligation to follow any, any city, county, state, or other definitions. USDA confers the, uh, the right to define it as you wish to, to you as the school food authority. Um, you could even decide that you're going to have a definition for local that applies, let's just say, uh, to your, your local fruit and vegetable purchases, but you want to have a different definition, perhaps, for your local meat purchases or your local dairy purchases. You might be in an area where you know you've got lots and lots of local fruit and vegetable producers very close to you, but you want to bring local products into the, into the whole whole tray, and for that you know that in order to find local beef, let's just say from, uh, competitively, you want to get bids from lots of different places, you know that you're going to have to expand your radius, expand the area that you consider local. Um, all of that is, is perfectly perfectly appropriate and in fact something that, that farm to school practitioners do every day. So local is yours to define, and uh, Local, the definition that you choose can vary depending on the season or depending on um, on the product. And and the other thing that we encourage people to think about when they're just getting started is, uh, as you're thinking about your definition for local, ask yourself uh, what your goals are. What are you What are you trying to achieve with your local buying program? If if your primary motivation for buying local products is to allow students from your school to go on field trips, let's just say. Your primary motivation has to do with uh, experiential education, and you want to get kids on farms, then you're probably going to want to choose a relatively um, narrow definition for local because you're not going to want to be in a, on a school bus for you know two-day drive into the, into the next state. But on the other hand, if your primary motivation for buying local foods is to is to create economic development opportunities in your region, then you could have a more regional definition. Um, if one of your primary uh, purposes is to get up and running really quickly, you want, you want to bring as many local products into your menu as possible, and you want to do it as fast as possible, then there, too, you might want 
to have a pretty comprehensive, uh, large definition so that you know, you've got lots to choose from and lots available at lots of different times. So um, think about your goals as you're, as you're setting up your approach to buying local. Uh, the other thing that we always like to, to ground ourselves in uh, when you're starting buying starting or maintaining your local buying programs is, of course, the menu planning cycle. Um, you know, now's a little bit late in the game to be thinking about next year, but still we've got some time. So there's, in our mind at USDA, you know, five different steps along the path in your menu planning cycle. You've got the moment when you're, when you're, when you're creating your menus, when you're thinking about what you're going to serve. And in that moment, as you're thinking about local products, questions to ask are, well, am I writing one menu for the year? Am I writing seasonal menus? Am I writing weekly menus? Am I writing cyclical menus? How many, you know, how many different menu cycles do you go through in a, in a given year? And you know, depending on the answer to that question, you're gonna you're gonna find places to put local products. You know, your your answers are gonna be different. Um, of course, you want to be thinking about budgeting and forecasting. Are you going to be setting aside a certain percentage of your operating budget for local products? And are you just going to spend it till it's over? Or do you want to make sure you're buying local year-round? Do you want to ask yourself a bunch of budgeting and forecasting questions in the context of local foods? Once you have a sense of whether you think, for example, you're going to bring local items in, let's just say on a once a month basis, maybe you want to do a harvest of the month program to get started. Do you know you, you want to have budget for that all year round? Um, you're going to take a look at your purchasing options. Are you going to want to find uh, individual producers to work with your school district? Or do you want to work with a mainline distributor to bring in your local products? So how are you going to receive these local products? That's going to be a question for you. And then we all know that you know they're only as good as is how often they, you know, they jump off the trays and into the mouth, so the children we're trying to serve. So we always encourage people to build in case testing opportunities for kids. Uh, marketing, you're going to see examples of that from the next speaker. And then finally, the assessing and adjusting. You know, what kind of feedback are you getting about the local products that you brought in? Um, did you start with something really simple and classic, like local strawberries? didn't even need to do taste testing. They were so delicious and so already familiar to the kids. Or did you start with something um, or try to introduce something a little more exotic, like local kohlrabi that kids had never seen before, and therefore they'd never tasted it before, and therefore you know, they needed a bit more encouragement and marketing and hand-holding and creativity in the, in the menu and how you, how you serve those items. Um, there's no right or wrong approach. Both, both would be right. So I'll mention just a, a few of my favorite ways to bring local products in. We, we did talk about taste testing just a little bit, but here's an example of um, some farm to school grantees at one of our grant sites tasting yellow tomatoes. A lot of kids say, oh, I don't like tomatoes. Or I certainly don't like them fresh. I love salsa. I love pizza sauce. I love tomato sauce. But no, not me. I don't like tomatoes. Uh, well, lo and behold, uh, if they're yellow, they do. So we did a little taste test with yellow tomatoes and helped kids understand that actually fresh tomatoes taste just great. Um, the other thing to think about is just ingredient substitution and or creating new recipes. I mean, maybe you're in that, that stage of your menu development when you when you see no place where you could swap out, let's just say in this instance, asparagus. You know, asparagus was on the menu but asparagus also happened to be available from a local producer, and so it was easy to swap out, swap out uh, you know, asparagus that was from nowhere in particular with asparagus that was locally sourced. Um, so that, that we would call an ingredient substitution versus creating a whole new recipe. Um, but you may actually take a look at your menu and realize, you know what, I've done, I've done enough research to know what's local in my neighborhood or in my area and realize that in order to really capitalize on the bounty of my region, I'm going to need to create a new item on my menu. Um, and that could be anything. It could be, you know, you created this, a new kale, kale salad. Usually you're serving iceberg lettuce, but you realize that there's so much kale available and at such a good price, you could, you could swap out the iceberg lettuce for kale. 
And then finally, another another approach, and this is uh, an example of a very sophisticated farm to school program. But uh, in Minneapolis, Minneapolis Public Schools, they now have a program called Minnesota Thursday, where literally every Thursday, um, as many items on the tray as possible are sourced locally. So this is an example um, that feeds back nicely into the the conversation we started with when I said that you know it's not just fruits and vegetables; it can be things like meat and tortillas that kind of thing. So you see that you see that here. So I want to hand the presentation over to my two colleagues. Uh, but before I do, I want to encourage all of you on the line to take four simple actions as you're thinking about your local foods program. Action number one, I want you to bookmark our website, which is uh, fns.usda.gov, and then just backslash farm to school. And the reason I want you to bookmark the website is because it is chock full of resources, like fact sheets and a whole guide on menu planning and a whole toolkit to either get started or further develop your farm to school program, uh, a whole 50, 60 page manual on how to buy local, including bid sets and RFPs and solicitation documents and requests for information. Uh, there's just absolutely no reason for you to recreate the wheel. A lot of the, the information you're looking for is, is available on the website. So action number one, bookmark the website. Action number two, sign up for our e-letter because it is uh, chock full of information on how to buy local and it comes out every other Tuesday. Action number three, connect with a USDA farm to school employee or Office of Community Food Systems employee. We have regional leads. Uh, in each of our seven FNS regional offices, and their contact information is available on the website that you bookmarked, so you can find that easily. And then the fourth action that uh, I really want to strongly encourage you to take this coming year is to start or go further with your local purchases in 2016-2017 school year. And I'm super confident that you're going to be able to do that, both because of all of the resources that I just went over very, very quickly uh, for you, but also because of the shining examples uh, set by school districts all across the country that are already out there doing this great work. And you are about to hear um, from the first of two of those. So thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you, Deborah. That was great information. And good afternoon to everyone out there. Uh, I want to start by saying thank you so much for being a part of this webinar. You know, Farm to School is such an exciting and robust topic. And I'm just really thrilled to have the opportunity to share our story with you today. So just as a little reminder, it was mentioned before, but uh, my name is Kara Sample. And I am the Assistant Director of Nutrition Services for Greeley Evans School District 6. And just to kind of orient you and let you know where we're located, we are about 60 miles north of Denver. And before I see here, there we go. All right, before I really dive into some farm to school specifics, I would like to share just a couple of school district stats with you. So our student enrollment is about 21,000, and we are actually ranked as the 13th largest school district in the state of Colorado. About 66% of the students we serve qualify for free or reduced price meal benefits. And our customer base is primarily Hispanic. However, I think it's really interesting to note that there are actually over 60 different languages spoken throughout our school district. So, you know, that said, our target audience is really fairly diverse. We serve about 18,000 meals per day during the regular school year. Our total operating budget is approximately 9.3 million. And we offer a variety of different meal provision programs. They are listed here on the slide. Everything from breakfast to lunch to snacks. And our latest and greatest venture is mobile feeding via our food truck, which we're pretty excited about. 
So now I'm going to take the opportunity to transition to really focusing on our local purchasing. And the graph that you see here on this slide kind of maps out our purchasing history from 2008 through 2015. So you can see here that we, we started our journey with local purchasing uh, during the 2008-2009 school year with one teeny tiny little cherry tomato crop. And from there on out, our goal was to increase uh, local purchasing each and every year. Um, as we've moved, you know, school year to school year, we just want to keep increasing that number. As you can see, I want to explain a couple things here on the slide. Mother Nature, of course, does not always agree with us. And during the 11-12 and 12-13 school years, we, we struggled with Mother Nature. Uh, the Western Slope had terrible weather, and we were unable to purchase apples, so an entire apple crop in 2011. So that's, that's the dip you see there. And then the fall of 2013, we experienced some major flooding in our area, which affected a variety of crops and impacted our ability to really maximize those local produce purchases. But overall, I mean, we started at $239 up to over $100,000 just you know, seven years later. So moving on, I wanted to dedicate an entire slide to the last school year. So this focuses on everything that we purchased from August 2015 through the end of the school year, which of course was just a few months ago, May of, of 2016. And you will notice here that these numbers not only take into account the dollars that we spent on local produce as the graph on the previous slide did, but I've also included here local proteins and local milk. Uh, Deborah really spoke to that when she opened up for us and, and said, you know, it's not just about fruits and vegetables anymore, it's, it's the entire plate. So all said, you can see that we spent a total of $920,000 on local products last school year, and that actually accounts for 25% of our annual food budget. So we were certainly thrilled about this accomplishment and the continued increase in dollars that we are, you know, we have the opportunity to reinvest in our communities. So this slide really showcases some of the most common farm to school products that we purchase for our school district. And a couple of these pictures has, have some fun stories associated with them, which I would like to share with you. Top center, you see what I like to refer to as a sweet corn assembly line. You see some, some kids and adults there shucking some corn. And what we do is we actually work with student groups, such as baseball teams and student councils, and we hire them to shuck our local corn for us. And this allows them the opportunity to raise funds for their programs and also educates them in regards to the local food cycle. And of course for us, it's a benefit for us because our staff members don't, don't have to shuck all the corn that we purchase locally. And another great story, on the left-hand side of the slide, you'll see a picture of our chili roaster, which is full of local Anaheim peppers. And we quite regularly roast our chili peppers in-house to make our homemade green chili sauce, which we use for a number of different menu applications. I'm actually going to talk about green chili later in the presentation, so we'll come back to that. So now I want to transition just a little bit, and I want to take a couple minutes to share with you a few ways that we integrate our Farm to School program throughout the school uh, the school environment, so not not just the kitchen, not just the cafeteria, but the the whole environment throughout the school. So I'll start with an example that is within the school cafeteria. On this slide, you see a couple of pictures of our farm to school poster series, which we display in all our cafeterias, and we rotate the posters out on a quarterly basis. We feel that this is hugely important and it really helps the students to know where their food is coming from. It's kind of the know your food, know your farmer concept. And these posters really function to help the students understand the connection to 
the food that's actually on their plate back to where it came from and how it was grown. So that's a great example of how we integrate not just the food, but education as well in the cafeteria. And then I want to talk about a uh, tying it all together farm to school integration example that ties back to the classroom. We offer farmer in the classroom visits to all teachers in our district. We do this via our student wellness program. And the way that it works is interested teachers simply access a request form on our website, which allows them to invite a farmer or a rancher to visit their classroom. And the farmer or rancher would then provide students with education related to farming and ranching, what they do on a daily basis, gardening, and really the cycle of food overall. And lastly, related to tying it all together, I, I love this illustration. Um, it really demonstrates the huge variety of ways that farm to school programs can be implemented from the ground up. So above the line on this slide, you see all of the stakeholders who could, can potentially initiate. So these would be the people really responsible for initiating a farm to school movement. Below the line are some of the partnerships and programs that can be considered to assist with the implementation of a farm to school program. And overall, I think this just really does a great job of demonstrating that it is so important to think outside the box, really get creative and access all possible resources to make farm to school programs more doable more manageable, and also very importantly, more sustainable. And you know, especially with the sustainability piece, the folks listed below the line are those, those passionate people and passionate groups that, that can really help you keep your farm to school movement moving forward. All right, so I'm gonna shift here again, and I'm gonna move on to talking about really the meat of the subject here, no pun intended. So I want to discuss uh, food and recipes and menus. So we here in our school district follow a four-week cycle menu for lunch, and we incorporate two distinct cycles during the school year, as noted here. So during the spring and summer, which is March through September, we offer uh, kind of lighter, more seasonal um, foods that you want to eat when it's hot outside. And then during the fall winter time period, which we define as October through February, we are offering more comfort food items, you know, the things that you think of eating when it's cold outside, those things that kind of make you feel good and warm your soul. And we've really found that creating those two distinct cycles has been a strategy that has really allowed us to be able to integrate local products on our menus when they are in season and available. So like I said, that's been a great strategy for us. So here on this slide are a couple of specific examples of seasonal local menu items that we serve. And I included these because they're a few of our more popular offerings. So you see in the spring, summer, you know, who wouldn't love a little barbecue chicken and chili lime corn in August when the sun is still beating down on us? And looking at fall, winter, um, how about some meatloaf served with a side of mashed potatoes when the weather turns chilly in December? And I've also included a link on this slide that will allow you, after this webinar is over within 48 hours, you all will receive the materials from this webinar, slides included, and this link, will you'll be able to access it. And it will allow you, if you're interested, to view our menus online via our Nutrislice menu marketing platform and just hopefully might inspire you or provide you with some additional ideas and local menu items that we're including on our menus. And we love to share our recipes, by the way. 
And speaking of recipes, uh, the bean and cheese burrito that we serve tells a great story that I wanted to share with you all. On the left-hand side of this slide, you will see the pre-made individually wrapped burrito of our past. And I would like you to note the unfortunately long and somewhat scary ingredient panel there. Now, on the right-hand side, you will see the very few ingredients that we now use to make our current homemade burrito, which includes local pinto beans and is offered with uh, that homemade local green chili sauce on the side as an optional topping, which I talked about previously. So every time we offer this entree on our menus, our central production kitchen team, you can see them pictured here, uh, they hand roll right around 9,000 burritos. So this is, a, this is a pretty big day for us here in our school district. Okay, and shifting gears a little bit one more time, I just wanted to tell you about uh, what is on our horizon and what we see in our future in terms of farm to school and local purchasing. So we are actually in the process of developing a food hub model similar to the one you see pictured here. Our food hub is a grant funded project that is underway and in process and essentially our food hub acts as an aggregating house for local products and as it continues to evolve it will really allow us to take in as much local produce as possible during the harvest season. Here in Colorado, our harvest season is pretty short. It's typically June through October, and the bulk of that time, we schools are not in session. You know, we have a, a, a handful of summer schools that are operating, but um, the regular school year doesn't start until harvest season is almost over. So this food hub, would be very busy during the summer, taking in local product, minimally processing it, and putting it up, if you will, keeping it in the freezer, so that it could then be used as um, an ingredient. Onion is a great example. We would blanch it, chop it, blanch it, freeze it, and then use it throughout the entire school year in a variety of different recipes. And then in future years, uh, these local items could potentially be sold to other school districts in the area who might not have the resources to procure uh, local products. So we would be able to help them with our food hub. And another really fun grant funded project that we are working on is pictured here and it is referred to as the D6 Growing Grounds. And this project will eventually be a space. Uh, it's going to be developed on, developed on existing district property, and it will be utilized to grow fresh produce for use in school meal programs. It will also be a location where students can participate, learn, and play while growing their knowledge about nutrition, food preparation, and agriculture. So the real intent behind this is to better connect District 6 nutrition so our department, School Food Services, to the larger community and to connect students with their local food system. And we're, we're really excited about this. We're actually going to be breaking ground here in a couple weeks, in right around mid-July. So pretty thrilled about that. So when it's all said and done, talking about the future, we will continue to focus on increasing our local purchases and expanding farm to school products in greater quantities to all the programs we offer. Our proverbial farm to school pillar will surely continue to grow and get sturdier as we learn and grow based on best practices shared by others and webinars such as this. So we're really excited to just continue to, to increase our local purchases and, and make our farm to school practices bigger and stronger. I did want to show this slide with you all. I mentioned earlier that we love to share our recipes and share our best practices. So um, we encourage you to connect with us. We have an option for everyone, as you can see here. Uh, Facebook, like us on Facebook. We have a Twitter handle. We have a Pinterest presence. And I've also included our website address and some email addresses, and I, genuine, I genuinely look forward 
to hearing from and connecting with some of you very soon. And I would like to end with a picture of my two and a half year old daughter. Her name is Cadence. And what you see here is her enjoying her dinner. She's uh, eating some meatballs made with local turkey, Parmesan polenta, and sauteed kale. And I'll tell you what, she is really my motivation to ensure that the 21,000 students that we have the opportunity to serve here in Greeley also have the opportunity to eat farm fresh, wholesome food each and every day like she does. So before I open it up to Q&A, I really want to challenge you all to think about how you can innovate in your environment to ensure the same for the students and the communities that you serve. Okay. So I'm going to take a peek at a couple of questions here before I turn it over to Stephen. All right, so here's a question. Uh, someone asked, Kara, what teachers seem to be more open to offer food and nutrition education? This is a great question. Uh, we have, I mentioned earlier that um, we offer our farmer in the classroom visits through our student wellness program. And we have an amazing student wellness team, a coordinator and a specialist that work in our nutrition services department. And they've really done a great job of identifying the champions out in the schools. And when I say champions, I refer to those teachers that are passionate not only about the standardized curriculum, but about the whole child and making sure that um, children are healthy overall. So two parts to my answer to this question. I would say identifying those champions has been super beneficial for us. And just to kind of piggyback on that, we generally find that teachers, PE teachers, tend to be very passionate as do health teachers, um, family and consumer science, you know, the folks that are working with, with foods and teaching their kiddos to cook have also been very open and willing to help us out with nutrition education. Great question there. That is not, it's not always easy to find those champions. And I'll answer one more question here before I hand it over to Stephen. Um, someone asked, Kara, how far in advance does the food service staff prep homemade foods such as the burritos? Another great, great question. We like the food to be as fresh as possible. So normally we are working about three days out. So to kind of illustrate that for you, if we were rolling burritos on a Monday, they would be delivered to our locations the following day on Tuesday, and they would then be served on a Wednesday. So again, you know, that, that varies, and that is the most ideal situation, and sometimes there's things that don't allow for that, but we do like to keep the items as fresh as possible. So we're looking at prepping about one to two days ahead of when they are actually on the menu. All righty. Well, like I said, I know Stephen has a lot of great information to share, and I just want to sincerely thank you all for your time today and for allowing me to share our Farm to School story with all of you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is uh, Steve Marinelli, and I'm the Food Service Director at the Milton Town School District in Milton, Vermont. And I'm going to share our farm to school story and how we integrate local foods into our menus, our community, and um, kind of how we got started and how we continue to grow our program. Um, Milton's Farm to School Adventure really started out uh, back in 2013 when we had the uh, distinct pleasure of being invited down to the 
White House with Michelle Obama and plant the White House garden. And I was able to bring a handful of fifth grade students to go down and plant the garden. And uh, remarkably, we were invited back six weeks later to go down, harvest the vegetables we had planted, and had a little uh, pizza cooking session with the First Lady. It was a fantastic experience for my district, my fifth graders, and it really launched um, the recognition of what we were doing to integrate local foods and try to build a farm to school program here in Milton. Um, a little background of who we are and where we're located. The Milton Town School District is, is located in northwestern Vermont, um, just about 15 miles north of Burlington. We have 1,800 students in our district, 45% free and reduced, and we are now up to 74% participation in our district. When I arrived here five years ago, the participation was just barely 30%. It was a very freeze the oven program, and it was very lackluster in what they were offering. So I came in with a with an attitude of bringing in local product, getting students and faculty involved in what we were doing, and to build a program that was sustainable. We provide meal service to pre-K, elementary, middle school, high school, and we now reach out to early child care centers around our community. We have just an annual budget of about $800,000, and out of that, 25% of all food purchases are procured locally. Here's an example of um, our squash we procured for last season. Um, I believe it was well over 600 pounds of squash there that um, we had students, community members, and food service workers that uh, processed it and got it prepared and frozen, and it provided us with uh, locally sourced squash for um, a majority of our winter season. These are the programs that we offer, and I'll kind of talk about how we integrate local foods into these programs. Uh, we, of course, run the National School Lunch and Breakfast Program. We provide breakfast in the classroom. We have a great fresh fruit and vegetable program. Um, we offer pre-K meals to an expansion. It's a new program here in Vermont, so we are now providing meals to our pre-K students, and we offer farm-to-school activities with them as well. Uh, we provide meals to our early ed education centers, and we also offer them the National School Lunch and Breakfast Program. Some of them take up CACFP as their program, and we have a very vibrant summer food service program. We are the third largest provider of summer meals in the state of Vermont. Here's an example of some of our students accessing some great local apples uh, for our fresh fruit and vegetable program. Here again, we talk about sourcing our menus to meet our seasons. We're here in northern Vermont. Our growing seasons are very short. Um, as Kara was speaking, by the time we are open back in full service in school, our harvest seasons are in full bloom and actually heading towards the end of their cycle. So we really like to take advantage of really fresh and locally sourced product in our summer programs. Um, here you can see we've actually got some uh, locally sourced chicken, locally sourced greens, fresh local strawberries, and a homemade muffin that goes into a summer meal. I would like to talk about some of our best practices and really what I've tried to do in our district. We're a very small district. We don't have a lot of resources like very large districts. So we really have to manage things on a very local 
level, and and it's uh, very few hands that do a lot of um, work in managing fresh produce that comes in and having to be able to manage it, get it clean, properly store it, and properly serve it. So we talk about seasonal cycle menus. So we are, our menus are cycled, but we take advantage of items that we can cycle through. So in the fall, we will have fresh corn, and we'll have fresh lettuce and cucumbers and tomatoes. And when we get more towards the winter season, we'll be changing over to winter squash and more root vegetables, a lot of beets, a lot of potatoes. And so we, we transition um, portions of our menus to meet the criteria of product we can get. We follow the procurement policies for informal and micro purchasing methods. That's something we're being a small district, we're able to take advantage of. So we're able to work closely with our apple producers, our other fruit producers, and and local farmers that um, we take advantage of um, these small purchasing methods. So it, it gives us the availability to purchase from very local sources. And we also have a very great buying group, um, a lot of school districts within the state of Vermont are members of a buying group and we work together to um, source a lot of our proteins, our, our dairy products and such. So our, just not only Milton, but there's a lot of other schools in our state that can take advantage of local purchasing and that's done through our buying group. We work with our local growers on product amounts, harvest, delivery times, and pricing. It's very important that, you know, in a school you're very busy getting your meals prepped and put out, so you really have to work with your growers. Um, they need to know what your needs are, the time of deliveries, and where you're going to use these products. So it's very important to set these standards with your farmers, go out and meet them, and really work with them so you're getting your product in a timely manner, they're able to harvest in a timely manner, and you're getting the best product possible. Having the proper tools in storage to handle fresh product is extremely important. To transition into a farm to school program, you have to have these things available. You have to have sinks designated for washing fruits and vegetables only. You have to have proper storage in your refrigeration so things are placed in proper manage and managed so they're not in an environment where they can be contaminated by other products. Staff training is extremely important because a lot of times staff has never handled fresh product and there's a lot of training in scheduling to be able to manage this product that is now coming into your kitchen. So whenever you can get uh, training for your staff, um, it's very, very important to get them on board to be able to manage this program. And we always make sure we label and advertise our locally sourced products. Our farmers work extremely hard to get us the product. We are very proud to have a very vibrant farm to school program. So we want to make sure that in every way we can make sure we are advertising and marketing these locally sourced products. Here's an example of, of our menu. I apologize if it's not easy to read. Um, but as you can see, we feature our, our Vermont products and where they're sourced, our, our farmers, um, we list our farmers. And we really try to integrate as much local product as possible. And here you see, this is in our August and September, just the kickoff of the school year. And we're taking advantage of plenty and plenty of fresh product because it's very um, available. And there again, we, we still take a lot of advantage of um, Vermont locally sourced beef, um, extremely a large amount of dairy products. So, we use as much local product when available as, pro as possible.
and there again, we always advertise our product. Here's some freshly shucked corn that's getting ready for service. And there again, we really try to promote our farmers. Um, you know, we we put where our product is sourced, and what we do in our school is we offer fresh fruit and vegetable bars that are self serve and all you can eat, and so it really gives our students a great opportunity to try these locally sourced product. It's some one thing to buy product, but you have to have your clientele being willing and recognize the product and be able to, and want to eat it. And that's something that we've worked very, very hard in our district. And I'm going to be talking about that a little more further on in my presentation of how we have tied our school community and our local community into buying into our farm to school program. There again, I talk about our fresh fruit and veggie bars. These have been extremely popular to, number one, let students know where their product is coming from, how it's sourced, how it's prepared. We have recipes available of what we're making. And the self-serve style is extremely helpful when it comes to the students coming to our point of sale systems. We have very, very little problem of our students having the proper amounts of fruit and vegetables on their trays to be able to have a reimbursable meal. Now I really want to talk about how this integration of locally sourced food has built our farm to school program not only in our cafeteria but in our classrooms and community. We always talk about the three C's of farm to school, cafeteria, classrooms, and community. And we really take that to heart here in Milton. And I'll demonstrate many opportunities of how we thread the three C's into the cafeteria, classroom, and community. First of all, we were very fortunate with the recognition from the White House. And um, we have uh, Senator Leahy, who is a great senator from Vermont, that has been one of the strongest advocates to farm to school programs in the nation. And we were able to receive a substantial farm to school grant, which let us hire a farm to school educator. We were able to have that grant funded for two years. We are now sustaining that position through food service. And we are now able to have a general fund budget that now manages part of our farm to school program so we can continue to grow it and sustain it. So here, as I'm talking about, students have to be able to recognize and be able to taste and try the product that you're serving. So we do taste tests on a monthly basis. We always do our, our vegetable of the month. It's a program from Green Mountain Farm to School that many schools in Vermont take advantage of. So there is always a vegetable of the month that we promote on our menus. We promote with taste tests, and it gets students engaged in trying new product. And we also go out and put product that they're not familiar with. You know, we have fiddleheads in the spring or spaghetti squash in the fall. So we try to integrate some of these items that are new and different and fun for our students. School gardens. We have gardens in each of our schools. We have curriculum that goes out and works into our gardens. And we are actually in the process of building a 38 by 40 hoop house at our high school that will grow all our greens for our district along with many other products. It will be managed by our biology and consumer science classes as well as our food service department having students work within our, our kitchens to help process and prepare food being grown right on our site in our district. 
cooking camps and Junior Iron Chef. We provide cooking camps during every break, during the summer breaks and winter breaks and spring breaks here at school. And we educate our students on how to utilize locally sourced products and to make different items. Um, here we are making some pasta with some locally sourced flour and eggs. And um, it just really gets students involved. We have students doing cooking activities in our kitchens on an almost daily basis. There's someone having some type of cooking project in our district. Community dinners. Every six weeks, we offer a locally sourced community dinner free of charge to our community. And these have become so popular that teachers and administrators and everybody tries to buy for a spot that if they're doing a science fair or some other project within school, they're requesting that we try to have our community dinners coincide with that because we have such a draw. And as you see in this picture, these are all community members. I have the executive director of our family center, the executive director of our Milton Community Youth Coalition, our superintendent, and our couple food service employees. And as you notice, they're wearing those beautiful blue t-shirts that say FACE. That is the organization that we've now developed that supports our our community dinners and other nutritional outreach programs that we do in our community. And it stands for Food Access and Community Engagement. It's been an extremely um, fantastic movement we've had in our community. And our community dinners have really spearheaded um, this process. Farmers Market, our farm to school coordinator, um, our food service department are very active in growing and expanding our farmers market. Our farm to school coordinator now manages the market. And here you see middle school students that bake bread every Thursday for our farmers market and sell it as a fundraiser. And this fundraiser is now going towards the development of an outdoor pizza oven and outdoor classroom that will be managed by our middle school. And there again, it's having access and incorporating locally sourced product that has engaged some of these great product programs that are happening in our district. Farm field trips. Kara also mentioned how important it is to get our farmers into our school and our students out to our farmers. There again, we have a great program of getting students out to our farms. We have a dedicated farm right here in Milton that students go to. They're our partner school. They provide a lot of locally sourced product for us. And in return, they also open up their farm for our students to go and have field trips and harvest and do taste tests and cooking engagements right there at their farm. Um, it's been a great, great program. And we also work very closely with Shelburne Farms, where they have a large um, educational program of farm to school. This is another great program that we started last fall. This is a USDA um, cooking program called Grow It, Try It, Like It, where we utilize locally sourced products and start educating our pre-K students at a very young age. So what we did here was we went out and got some grant funding. And we went out and we were able to get families that um, would probably qualify for free and reduced meals. And we offered them free cooking demos in our Grow It, Try It, Like It. And it was a four-week program. Every Saturday morning, these families came in, and they would work on cooking with a locally sourced product. We would have the mystery box where 
the kids would go and, and feel and touch and smell and taste the product that they were using. We would talk about my plate, and it was such a great program. And we did this for four four-week cycles, and we reached over 24 families. And at the end of each cooking cycle, the families were able to bring home everything they utilized and to bring all the ingredients home and cook the same product for their family. And in the end, we had a celebration and certificates. But what we also did was we offered um, coupons to our farmer's market. Every family got $35 worth of coupons for our farmer's market. And I am proud to say that 100% of those coupons were redeemed at our farmer's market. So as you can see, we worked very hard in working closely with our farmers, with our producers, and working with our school and our community to make farm to school vibrant, to be able to continue to grow, to have it locally sourced food come into our school programs, and to have families really recognize the work and the effort we're trying to do to build healthier students in our community. Thank you very much, and I can take some questions. I have a question about the, the community dinners. Who pays for that? What we do is we have a, um, a donation jar, and we have some private funders that have supported our program, and it is now self-sustaining. And I think I'm getting kind of close to the end here, so I think I will throw it right back to Liz to uh, wrap us up. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you to all of our panelists today. And before we conclude, I have a few announcements. Upcoming state events are planned during July and August in South Dakota, Texas, Minnesota, North Dakota, Nebraska, Wisconsin, and Wyoming will be having team up events in their states. The next Team Up Thursdays webinar will be conducted on Thursday, July 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central Time. And please remember that all of the webinars are recorded and can be viewed on the Team Up for School Nutrition nutrition success website at www.theicn.org slash team up. Thanks again for your participation and have a great day. <laughs>